separate sets of company get the exact same leads. Some companies will execute on them, some companies won't. Get into that. How do you be that connector and how do you build community? People still spend a tremendous amount of money and effort on email marketing um, and haven't made the shift into text marketing. Yeah, uh, you know, I've been, I've, been, I've been in the digital space for probably like the last 20 years. Actually, I got started selling print yellow pages. Probably not too many of your listeners are going to know what that thing is other than holding the door open. But I started, uh, I started selling print yellow pages at the very turn of the 2000s. I ended up going and selling a product called yellowpages.com. That was a lot of contractors had the opportunity to help their business grow. Um, Ended up uh, growing that from zero to about 170 million. Um, that one did a couple other things. It was an international web hosting company. But ultimately, I, I came back uh, to, to selling search engine optimization, pay per click management for a company called One SEO. I was there for the last 10 years until I got this opportunity to come and partner um, with with the owner, and I'll get into that in a second with uh, Home Service Freedom. And you know. Selling, selling to the trades has been something that you know I've been very, very passionate about because they, they have an opportunity to really help people's in situations where they haven't helped them before. And we've been in the last three years through the pandemic uh, now knowing a term that we probably didn't know before, which is called essential businesses, um, and they really truly stood out. And uh, to be able to see that growth in an essential business of uh, plumbing, heating, and air, and how they adopted their, their, their methods of dealing with people when people didn't want people in their homes to, you know, the capacity that a, a toilet took in one particular day by having schools shut down, this, that, and the other thing. Um, it's been a, a, an incredible ride for me. Um, I feel very fortunate. I've watched a lot of businesses go from zero to a hundred million, $200 million in revenue over the last, uh, 15 to 20 years. And it's been a pretty impressive opportunity. And then recently I partnered with Tommy Mello uh, to get uh, home service freedom off the ground. We're getting ready to have the freedom event here, but it's a business coaching consulting implementation group uh, for the trades. It's not limited to garage doors, which he's famous for and having uh, the largest garage door company independently owned in, in the country uh, just recently sold the private equity for 600 some odd million dollars but uh you know he's a pretty dynamic individual i just want to hear a hot take from bill and then a cold trend so you know something that's cooling off maybe it's outdated that maybe a lot of people are still doing but they maybe shouldn't be so first one what's a hot take you have on the hvac industry that you 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 uh, want to share with people you know my my hot take is pretty simple um and it might start, stir a little controversy across the board, but you know I've seen separate sets of company get the exact same leads. Some companies will execute on them, some companies won't. But the companies that won't execute, the hot take is that it's always the marketing company. They never looked at how their CSR answered the phone. They never looked at how their team was handling the lead, how dispatch was. They don't see their own journey. They only see that we were given bad leads. Mm. Okay. So the hot take is it's not always your marketing company. Sometimes it's your internal process that drive the entire journey. Because when somebody's saying AC repair in Minneapolis, Minnesota, they're looking for an AC repair company. How you handle that call, how you handle getting to the client, and how you turn that lead around is all going to be dependent upon your internal process. It's not just always about the marketing company. Yeah, <laughs> we've both seen that, right? We've both seen people, hey, you're looking through the leads? I mean, we look through the leads, man. We look, there's lists of, you know, here's 20 good leads, and like, which ones did you close? And there's no, you know, like, that close rate's important. Well, but, you know, but, a lot of times when I, yeah. A lot of times when I have conversations, when I had conversations with clients in, in my former world, the question would be that these leads suck. OK, yeah. you hear it all the time. And my cost per lead is X amount. OK. And so one of the things that call recording does do is it brings the opportunity for an owner to listen to a call that mm -hmm. takes place with their team. And yeah. I would play three to four calls and say, hey, what happened on this particular call? What happened on this particular call? Oh, you generated in service Titan. 
sixty thousand dollars on these three calls and you only yeah. spent six thousand dollars that's yeah. a 10x mr customer i get you want to have more leads but sometimes you have to be able to execute on the leads that you have today better than you ever have before yeah i mean that's the weird position that we get as a marketing agency sometimes seeing the back end of two companies who are getting the same amount of leads and one of them's growing fast and one of them's not and it's tough all right cold trends what are a lot of yeah. what's a trend that a lot of people are doing but you think is cooling off or outdated yeah i i i think that uh people still tre spend a tremendous amount of money and effort on email marketing um, and haven't made the shift into text marketing. 97% uh, of all texts do get open at some point in time, yet hours and hours and hours are spent on email marketing. And I'm saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just not up to speed as much mm -hmm. as what happens with regards to a text message and where your capabilities are to turn things around. We're, we live in a microwave society and right. instantly people want gratification. If you're running some type of special or they're in need for that particular offer or it's a follow-up, text messaging is going to be a much better platform than what you're seeing in a traditional email marketing campaign. I appreciate that perspective. All right, let's talk about brand versus HVAC lead generation. Um, we're eager to get more leads. Why spend money on brand and brand awareness when we want leads and more leads now? Yeah, um, you know, it's an interesting question as far as when you're looking at how do you particularly grow and where you are in your revenue stream and, you know, you have to start somewhere. Um, I always like to call it what my good friend Dan Antonelli says is you can't focus on the white van syndrome, okay? Yeah. But it does take a little bit of cash up front to say, hey, I'm going to build a van with a great brand, with a great wrap, so my, when my employee comes in for that particular situation, not only one are they getting in front of that one household, but the four households around it, are they seeing that brand? Are they creating that environment that people are going to remember what you have and what you don't have? It's yeah. kind of like in the same situation, Tim, when I made a decision to buy a new Jeep Wrangler. I went through my midlife crisis, needed to get the Gladiator. I made that decision I was going to buy the Wrangler. Everywhere I was driving prior to that Wrangler, what did I see? I saw people in Jeeps. I saw people in Wranglers. And I'm saying to myself, I'm remembering the brand that I want to buy based on what's in front of me all the time. So, you know, that, that focus on brand has to be as you grow in revenue. Yes, do you need demand? Do you need to focus on your LSAs? Do you know, need to focus on your Google My Business, your reviews, your search engine optimization, your long-term strategies? Yes, those are all gonna be things that incrementally get you off the ground from one, three, five million. But as you start to get in that five, seven, eight, nine million, your marketing shifts and spends have to be in a little bit of a change. You know, I'd always ask a client and say, listen, hey, what are you what are you gonna finish out this year? And they're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna finish out at 6.8. And I'm gonna be like, let's talk about where your budget pro process is for next year. And then they would say, well, I wanna do 9.2. And I would say to them, okay, well, there's either one or two ways you can look at this. You can look at the gap from the 6.8 to the 9.2, okay? And say that I'm gonna have a $2.4 million in new business. You're not going to get that on the same marketing allocation as you had at 6.8 million. You're going to have to increase because you're going for an aggressive goal of almost 30% increase over where you currently were. So if you're not willing to make those adjustments and spread yourself out to say, hey, I'm not just going to look at SEO and PPC and LSA and Google My Business, but yes, I'm going to look at direct mail. I'm going to utilize products like Chirp. I'm going to be in a situation where I have different entities that driving business inward. How does my billboards look? How does my TV look? How does my radio look? How are the different entities that when people aren't thinking about me, they start thinking more about me? Mm. And I think you have to have that collective aspect as your brand, as your revenue grows and your allocation towards revenue is there from a marketing standpoint. And I'm a, I think I'm a big believer in the Dan Antonelli mindset. And he always says things along the lines of like, if you're not, if you don't have a great brand, just expect to spend more on marketing. Like you, he, he basically says, if you're not going to make sure that brand is memorable and there's clarity around the name and the brand and the colors, 
then expect to spend more on every single lead, which I think is correct because like you just got to make it easy to spread the word about you, right? Like easy to spread the word. But how do you make sure you don't waste money on brand? Because we're talking about things like bus wraps or whatever they happen to be. Let's say like other kind of like, I don't know, what, what else is included in brand? Like we're talking about billboards, we're talking about radio, and sometimes like things like radio might be easier to track. Okay, we rolled out a radio and ca campaign and we got 20% more call. But sometimes there's things that it's unclear and you don't get that ROI right away. How do you make sure you don't waste money on that? Well, the first thing that, that I'm going to take a, a full advantage of is, is utilizing call tracking to, to, to the behavior of which I have. And as a matter of fact, you even see now people are in big brands. You don't have to be the smartest guy on the block. You have to be the guy that's willing to implement what you see others doing that see it effectively. Why is yeah. Nike on the commercial that they have on, on the NFL on Sunday, why are they putting a QR code on your TV? Because they want you to go up, they want you to scan that QR code, and they want you to buy those new Nike shoes that your favorite player's wearing. Okay? The QR code went dead prior to COVID. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they're utilizing something that's going to help track and understand the impact. Do you have a different coupon code for the different aspects of where you are? Do you have TV 20 or do you have radio 15 or whatever the particular incentive is that you're giving back? It's about tracking that investment and having specific call numbers. I think Tommy might have like 8,000 call numbers, probably even 20,000 for, for A1 on his different aspects. So it's really about saying, hey, how many different numbers do I have? Am I dynamically changing those based on the lead source that comes into my site so that I can put myself in the best possible position to know that something might take a little longer? There's also an attribution model that comes into play. Is it really about what happens on the front end of the lead or the back end of the lead? Because I might have clicked on one of those great PPC ads that your team has put together, Tim, went to the website, saw the Dan Antonelli brand. OK, my wife says to me, hey, can you run to the store? All right. I come back. I start looking for a particular company online. I remember the brand as I come back into the website because I Googled their particular company. Well, what got the lead source there was the PPC ad. But what converted the end was my Google My Business page. Yeah. So it could be a situation where then I saw a TV ad as the end concept. You have to look at attribution models across the board to specifically see where they are and what brings you the most return on investment. And there's a lot of different ways that you can go yeah. about that to be able to specifically see where your best spend is and where your best return is. The thing that I don't look at, Okay, and I'm going to give you one more cold take. I don't look at cost per lead. I look at revenue generated per lead. Because I think looking at cost per lead, if I brought you a thousand leads that all stunk and you made a thousand dollars off of it, but your cost per lead was 10 bucks, but only made a thousand dollars. But on the same token, I brought you five leads and your mm. cost per lead was 200, but you made 50 grand. Which one's oh, the yeah. better investment? Oh, I had a cost per lead over here of 10. Or I had a revenue generated of 50 grand for that yeah. amount of money spent. And I think so yeah, many people get, get that particular statistic yeah. up. I agree 100%. And I think the unsophisticated marketer will pitch the unsophisticated home service business owner sometimes on this, this lead number quantity. Like I, I, you see it. We all see it. People in DMs. I don't know if you probably, you know, as somebody for... Uh, working at a marketing agency, got those emails forwarded to you from these like low end marketers who are like kind of just trying to drum up business and they're saying things that sound so good. They're trying to sell them the world. People in our clients. You mean like DM, SEO for $29 a month? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's endless amounts of those pitches and like people will sit there and like, it'll be like a new marketer. And sometimes I'm just like, I, I don't, I'm not mad at you. It's just like, how much of that turned into business? Because there'll be somebody that's like, look at these 15 leads that I got for $200. And I'm like, I look, I look at the back end of what those leads are and it's zero, there's zero real customer in there, let alone a qualified lead. Like we're talking zero real customers because it's very easy to get spam. <laughs> like I, I think about Facebook ad, uh, ads a lot and this, and I know it's, I know that it's like, they're kind of easy to pick on because it's kind of easy to get bad leads. 
But like, it really matters the amount of closed deals. You have to do an adequate amount of that type of marketing to, to see real closed deals. What's an adequate amount? I don't know, but like we're talking in the many thousands of dollars. And then looking at how many closed deals you got from that. And you also can't give up right away. I'm not advocating for somebody testing $3,000 on Facebook ads and then never doing it again because a little bit we're investing in the the structure of where we're building out ad campaigns and we're building out well, we're finding out what failed and the more there's more value in failing enough to figure out what works but th this what you're talking about it's how many closed deals we've got for that ad spend how much close how much closed revenue we've got and basically that's like the pulpit that i always preach from the the lead quantity the lead quantity is great as like a leading indicator, but the real indicator is revenue. And like if you, if you're constantly optimizing everything around lead quantity, you can really waste a lot of money, basically. <laughs> well, you know, I think that you, if you look at the onion, right? Okay. And the onion, you start to peel it back. Okay. Well, let's look at where my revenue is last year. I did a million two in the month of July. Okay, well, this year I did a million four in the month of July. All right, so I had a 12% increase in the revenue growth, but my spend was the same. Okay, so I know my percentages went up because of that. Great. Now let's peel the onion back a little bit. Let's see where the revenue per channel came from. Okay, how long was that decay on the time that that happened? There's so much data and analytics that go into it that at the end of the day, is your revenue going up or your revenue going down? If your revenue's going up and you have good communication with your team, then continue to work with them. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to is communication, transparency, and the ability for you to grow your business to the ult ultimate goal that you want to grow yeah. to. 100%. Um, one thing I notice, you know, the, one of the reasons we're having this podcast and stuff like that is you were at an event with me, Pantheon, Service Titans Pantheon, which was a great event, by the way. I'm um, grateful to just be able to be at that one. You were such a connector in the industry. I feel like, one, you know everybody. <laughs> um, and then you just were so positive and you're building community and you were hyping up your friends. And I like the way you kind of like, you're like, dude, this guy's awesome. This guy's awesome. You were just sharing and I, we were sitting there and you were just, you connected with me, uh, connected with a bunch of these people. And I really appreciated that. So thank you. I want to just acknowledge how nice of that, that was of you. And then I wanted to ask you just a little bit about that. Like, how do you, how do you get into that? How do you be that connector and how do you build community um and and i guess why you know I, i'm um, trying to well, the, get into the, the, this a little the, bit more the, so yeah the the how is the how is the easy part you just can't be afraid to talk to people about what they're doing and where they're going because anytime you make it about them versus you whether it's an employee whether it's another person people will generally speaking open up to you to have a conversation um, I've obviously I've been in the space for a while, so I do know a lot of people around it. Um, and being at the different events, I think the greatest networking networking you can do is from 8 p.m. till 11:30, 12 o'clock at at the bar in the lobby. I don't drink, but I'm going to be the one closing it down because I know there's somebody else there that has some some bit of value to bring to me that I can connect. Because I really truly believe that your network is your net worth. Um, and whether it's being somebody that's doing a hundred million and I have somebody that's coming to me and saying, Hey, Bill, who do you recommend that we go and see from a shop? You know, we're currently doing $80 million. I'm going to say, Hey, you guys should go see any hour. Give Dustin a call, you know, mm -hmm. go see Tommy shop, see different companies that are doing different revenue values of where you want to aspire, because I can assure you they've already done what you are trying to do and what problems you're going to face. Um, I think networking is selling. Um, it's constantly selling why people should know and help each other out. I think there's a tremendous amount of, in my particular scenario, that I bring gratitude uh, back to each other, um, you know, because I think with, with positivity and gratitude, it's going to help me uh, to continue 
taken me down my journey of uh, what I want to do and where I want to go. Cause I'm in the, uh, I like to say it, I'm on the back nine of where my professional development is. And for, for me, it's about how do I help others? Um, you know, I've, I've lived a great life. I have a lot of great connections and, and I'm in, in a situation where if I can help Tim Brown in something that he's going to do, somebody's going to pay it forward to me when I need something in that particular aspect. So, you know, I think that networking is a key to any business. I think it's a network, you know, whether you're the guy doing 300,000, be at your local BNI meeting, go to your Latips meeting, start your networking out from a ground floor level that as you continue to grow and, and scale, um, I think the biggest thing, like I said, is that the people are already facing the problems. Why did you have asked to have me on my on your podcast? Well, one is you're trying to get into this podcast space. You're making yourself better. Why wouldn't I give back? I gained something by giving to you, which is the joy of what I've already created. Absolutely. Um, is there any kind of community uh, like connection from business owner to business owner in the Home Service Freedom Coaching Group? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's one of the key competencies that we've tried to put into Home Service Freedom is that, you know, the community and the education is is very much a um, a key integral part that we we want to focus on to be able to say, hey, listen, we want people to share ideas. We want people to say, come to our shop. We want people to be in an environment. Look at the Facebook groups, whether it's Service Avengers, um, Home Service Millionaire, you, you pick it. There's a tremendous community of people sharing ideas, questions. Um, hey, who do you recommend for a CRM? What makes that CRM great? Hey, what roofing company? Uh, I'm utilizing ABC. Should I be utilizing GAF? Um, you know, having those different Facebook groups and joining them, you'll get a lot of great things out of them as far as from owner to owner, as well as strategic partner to owner in, the, in, the, in that same aspect. And I think that for for me, that's one of the things I love about this space is that people aren't afraid to share best practices and what's made. Them. They're, they're handing out playbooks and yeah. saying, hey, come utilize this playbook. And if you don't take advantage of that, shame on you. And I think that might have been like what started my journey on visiting a lot more shops is I think Tommy Mello saying you should visit shops. So I think the first shop I visited was his. Um, cause I was uh, in Arizona and I was like, all right, I'm just going to pop by and do like a live. And then I just have visited a bunch more now. And so I'm kind of like, the, you know, that's a life changing thing. If you really get out to shops and I mean, maybe that's so much more common in HVAC. I, I don't know. Like where is that more common in HVAC? I know that I'm, I'm coming a little bit from roofing and I'm just going to acknowledge that, but. I think that you're going to see it continue to spread, but HVAC, it is definitely something that people are very open to sharing, sharing ideas and best practices of what has made them um, be able to do it. Groups like Next Star, CEO Warrior, Blue Collar Success Group, they've all been path generators. And we think that Home Service Freedom is going to be the next uh, aspect that where people will want to be a part of a group that is helping from a leadership culture, uh, best practices and community standpoint that's going to help them get to that next level. Awesome. And you guys accept all home service businesses into home service freedom. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make a difference whether you're a roofer, whether you're a solar guy, whether you're a siding guy, whether you're a painter, whether you're a, a pooper scooper, you, uh, heating, air conditioning, plumbing, electric. Uh, the thing that, you know, for, for us is that as you're growing your business, you have to think about are you working in the business or are you working on the business? And if you're not prepared to work on the business and get out of the truck or get out of the yard or get off the roof or get out of the room painting, then you're never going to grow and scale where you need to be. And I think that's one of the things that's going to make this group really, really great is that you have to be in that mindset to say, I'm going to, I'm going to nail it, then I'm going to scale it, and then I'm going to exit it. Awesome. And I mean, I, from what I understand, like the frameworks that Tommy Mello has used to just skyrocket his business are, are baked right into this thing. Um, I'm also really excited to read this Elevate book, which I haven't. I, I think I read his first book or listened to it on an audiobook. I love audiobooks. Um, but I, I got to check out the second book. Um, it, what are the, some the, of the things? Yeah, that the second book is book? awesome. Yeah. What does that book cover? Um, it's, called, it's called Elevate. Um, yeah. you can get it. It's about to come out on audio, but, uh, 
you know, it's a great, it's a great read. Um, it's a building a when business for everybody. Audio, wins. I'm a big audio guy. So is it next couple of months? I, I want to say I, I'm, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get in trouble by the time you air in it first. So make sure yeah. you, uh, you cut this yeah, part yeah. out. I think it's coming out the next, yeah. it's coming out in the next two weeks. He's just been on a road tour from Pantheon yeah, to, yeah. Uh, yeah. to all the different events that he's doing dream conference. And it's a situation that, um, you know, she's trying to find the time to make it perfect. So, um, so many events, you know, yeah, this and is I, so many events, right? So many events. Why should somebody make it to home service freedom out of all the events? I know Tommy is the man. So, but what, what else about this event really, um, takes this thing and makes this like one of, one of your events from this like, uh, year. Look, I, I, I never try to take away from what somebody else is putting into their event. And there is a tremendous amount of great, aspects out there um i think the thing that that you generally speaking want to have to have a great event first of all is a venue um i can't say that there's a better venue than the jw marriott bonnet creek uh time of the year uh, orlando november 1st 2nd and 3rd you're not dealing with 95 100 degree heat it's probably one of the nicest weathers that you're going to get for an event there's not a tremendous amount of east coast events um most of the events either happen in texas in austin Phoenix, San Diego, or Las Vegas. So it brings back an East Coast, it brings back an East Coast flair. The content yeah. in the lineup, okay, if you're in a position where you're ready to scale, the experts that are going to be at that event from Keith Mercurio to Sean Michael Crane to Aaron Gaynor, a guy went from $50,000 in debt to $100 million in debt, Chad Peterman, Lance Bachman, um, you know, you could go on and on. Darius Livers, uh, Ishmael Valdez, uh, you know, it's just Al Levy, star studded, Dan Antonelli, oh, um, Al Levy. you know, all different people. Now, and here's the final thing. Tommy's made it work. Other people might be giving away different items as far as the event. He is giving away 11 different, 11 different aspects that can impact your business today. There's a $20,000 Dan Antonelli branding package. There's literally uh, a year's worth of service Titan support. There's spending time with Tommy coming out to your business, having Jim Leslie for, for two hours. Uh, you know, it's just, it, could go, it goes on and on. <laughs> having a complete IT support system for a year. Selfish question here. Are you guys still accepting vendors for that event? <laughs> No, we sold out. We sold out wow. on the vendor side of things. We sold out on the vendor side of things you know, immediately. You can sell out. Like there's some events that'll just take vendors forever. So that's kind of a beautiful thing that you've sold out. But, you know, our, our perspective was, um, and I'll be very honest with you about the event, is that we we decided that we wanted to have less vendors, uh, yeah, and we don't cool. look at them as vendors. We look at them as strategic partners. Um, yeah. That way that they have the opportunity that they're getting on the ground floor for what we're doing. We want to support them. It's not a vendor palooza or pitch fest and there's more vendors than there are people. Um, you know, and I've seen that plenty of times out there. I think for us, the, the real big thing is that what's the value that you get by coming to the event? And quite frankly, it's not a money maker. Number one is if anybody's out there having an event that tells you they're making money off it, very rarely do they break even. Secondly, yeah. Tommy's put a guarantee. If you don't get value out of his event and what's going on, he's going to give you your money back. Um, but you're going to have to explain to him what you didn't get in the value because I assure you the lineup is going to bring the fire and the heat that's going to say, you want to exit your business, here's the things you need to do. You're looking for new marketing, here's the things you're going to do. Okay? You're looking I for... Always, I always say it too I, on these things, it's like that community, that, that relate, the relationships often are... You know, you get a couple companies that are like oh, 20, 30 percent further along on the path than you that you're friends with now. Those things, I think that pays for a lot of this stuff, too. Like, so go and connect, connect, connect to other companies that are are winning. And I think no that's doubt. A no doubt. No doubt. The, the biggest thing is to take it. Most people go to a, most people go to events. And my good friend Howard Partridge wrote, wrote a book called Failure to Implement. OK. Mm. And the biggest challenge that people face is that they go to shows and they don't have the ability to implement any of the items, any of the items that they mm -hmm. take from specifically the show of what they can. There's a famous saying that Cristiano likes to use. It says 95, five, 95 percent of the material. You never implement five percent of it. 
So mm -hmm. let's take the opportunity when you go to these shows to bring back actionable items that are going to impact your business as you go into 24. That's why this yeah. event will be the best is because you will get that. Love it. Well, well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Bill Russell, everyone, Home Service Freedom. Uh, where can people go check out more about Home Service Freedom? Yeah, just go to freedomevent.com. Uh, it gives you all the details as far as the event, November 1st, 2nd, 3rd, JW Marriott, Orlando, Florida. Uh, it will be the event that I think that uh, really kind of capsulizes the entire year. Um, you know, and the lineup is incredible. The price is very reasonable, um, you know, to get the type of content that's going to impact your business and take it to the next level. Freedomevent.com. And uh, we, we look forward to uh, just put a code in at BR20, BR20, and it'll give you 20% off your tickets. Bill Russell 20, BR20. Thank you so much. Um, podcast is put on by Hook Agency, Hook Agency all over social. Uh, and uh, thank you for taking the time. Listen, pleasure. Yes, sir.